Welcome to episode 230 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 16th of March, 2013. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And please don't forget to rate us on iTunes. Today's guest is Steve of Mulks TV Talk, and joining him are your hosts, Jody, Steve, Brad, Brian, and myself, Billy. Hello, Billy. Welcome, mate. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm going fantastic. Welcome back for another action-packed show. Yeah. We've got Billy on, uh, we've got uh, Jody on. Hey, Jody. Hey, how you doing, Brad? I know it's got Steve on. Hey, Steve, what's up? Um, but that is the biggest intro ever. Yeah, yeah and that is uh, Steve Monks, by the way, he's from uh, Monks TV Talk. Uh, we'll be chatting to him very shortly. Um, also, we've got St- uh, Steve, Steve. Hey, uh, Steve's. hey uh, yeah, just to let you know, Wirecast just crashed, so I had to restart it. So uh, we're back up live. So we're recording now, are we? Yeah, I just had to push again. Big fail. Um, hey Brian, what's up, mate? Welcome back to the show. You've been on for a while. Yes, been a long time. And uh, you got a new mic and stuff, so that's pretty cool. And uh, also, yes, I do. We'll be talking to Andrew Cunningham from the Grand Prix from the Grand Prix very shortly in Melbourne. Um, so uh, yeah. yeah, we've got Steve um, from Mock Mox TV Talk. Steve, how are you, mate? Good, I preemptively jumped in there. That's the problem with too many Steves, and when one of them is one that likes the sound of his own voice. That's all good, buddy. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> Look, I'm doing really well. Thank you guys for having me on the Tech Webcast. Great to have you on. Uh, tell us about yourself. What are you, what are you doing? That sort of good stuff. Look, I'm a nerd in my daily life. I work for a, uh, a mining technology company, uh, and we set up wireless networks uh, in mining pit uh, situations, and we also make access points that are designed to go on to uh, heavy machinery in that in that in environment and make that go. So I work for them during the day, but then at night I'm all about the television. That's fantastic. What sort of TV stuff do you enjoy? Look, I am a bit of a whore when it comes to television because I enjoy scripted drama, I enjoy reality, uh, documentary, news programming. I'm kind of across a lot of it. Though I will say, there's probably only three or four shows that have my complete dedication. When it comes to if it's on, I need to be watching it. Definitely, definitely. What's your view on the new Foxtel Play that's coming out in June, uh, Steve? It's a great extension for Foxtel technology and a real proof that when a company understands how tech and television can work together and they put the effort in, it really pays off. And, and what we're seeing with Foxtel Play is exactly that. Foxtel launched their Go app. Uh, it would have been late last year, late 2012, and uh, kind of took a few people by surprise because it's excellent add-on, excellent additional content to what they broadcast, but then also an opportunity to watch Foxtel on like your iDevice. Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree. It's, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. On the iPad, it's going to be fantastic. On the Xbox, is great. I use it on yeah, the Xbox. So, and, yeah, it's good. Well, that's right. The, the tie-in for, for Foxtel Go was that you can only have it if you have a Foxtel subscription, yes. but now with Foxtel Play, you'll be able to go, hey, Foxtel, I just want it on my iPad, and they'll go, okay, we'll sell you that. Definitely. I'm getting it. Are you going to get it, Steve? Uh, you know it. In a heartbeat. <laughs> Definitely. I agree. Um, Jody, any questions for Steve? Jody, are you there? Nope. Um, I, I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah. Uh, my mic was off. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jody. Any questions um, for Steve? Yeah, Steve, I'm curious how, how did you get involved with this whole TV? And, you know, you mentioned you, there's a couple shows that you are glued to or that are must watches. What are those? Look, I, I, I am, a, a, I guess, a child of popular culture. So I grew up, I'm of the ilk, I'm in my extreme 30s, so nearly 40. So I grew up watching television and got my Sesame Street and all of those sorts of things when I was a little kid, uh, but also a great dose of a lot of repeat programming from the US, so sitcoms and, uh, and that sort of stuff. I know what Gilligan's Island is, for example. Uh there's a lot of stuff, and that has just meant that I love television, and it's something that allows everybody to have an opinion, and it's entirely valid. So you, people may not want to talk about politics or religion or those sorts of things, but you can say, hey, what television do you watch? And straight away you're going to have a conversation with someone. So that's what got me into television or wanting to be a media commentator and talk about it. As far as the shows I like to watch, Game of Thrones, top of the list. Good show. Yes. Yeah. Good show. Yeah, that is good I just got into that show just the other day. Oh, look, it's stunning. And, and when you layer in the fact that it's only available in Australia via a legal torrent or 
uh, via the Foxtel um, service. Yep. Previously, uh, I think Australia had the, the infamy of being the country that was the place that was the one responsible for the most torrenting or the most illegal downloading of Game of Thrones. Yeah, definitely. Um, Billy, any questions for Steve? That's that's actually what I wanted to ask about. So if you get into a show, is it because of the, the delay? Do you have to, to frequently torrent, or is it only because of the availability of something like Games of Thrones? Because that's the only way I can get it, too, because I don't have HBO, and I have to get HBO in order for me to get that. Yeah, I, look, and that's, that's I mean, I, absolutely a, a concern for some people. Foxtel in Australia is, is the, you know, the local broadcaster of a lot of the HBO content have done a really smart thing now where they've introduced this process which they're branding as Express from the US. Uh, and so two hours after the episode has aired in the US, they're playing it in Australia. Uh, so season three, I know the first episode is the 31st of March in the US. Uh, it, it, that makes it the 1st of April from us. So two hours after it's aired on the, uh, the West Coast, we're going to have it available to us and screening in Australia, mm. which is unprecedented. They've never done that before. Uh, uh, say, that, and, sounds, that sounds pretty cool, actually, you know. Yeah, well, look, and it's a great reason for people to then say, you know what, if all I have to do is pay, and I'm going to make up a figure because they're not out, but if I have to pay Foxtel 25 bucks a month to have access to Foxtel Play so I can get it on my iPad and I can then watch Game of Thrones as soon as it comes out, why do I need to torrent it? Exactly. exactly. Good answer, Good answer, Steve. Um, uh, Chatterbox Live, any questions for Steve? Yeah, I'm, I'm a great, you know, I love TV series. Um, there's so many out there that I watch, probably like 10 or more. Um, you said you provide commentary. I mean, what does your website do exactly? How does it, um, uh, you know, do you uh, have a live stream or... Yeah, look, we jump around with the content that we make available on Mox TV Talk. During the first quarter of the year, it's very reality television heavy because there's a lot on. So there's recaps and a bit of news about programming and what's going on. Um, I like to make sure that there's interviews with the people who make television, who are on television. So whether they're podcasts or whether they're video face-to-face -face interviews, uh, there's also my thoughts about how the networks are going. And, and in Australia, we see an interesting situation where we have three main commercial free-to-air channels and then Foxtel as the only subscription television provider in the country mm. uh, and, and then two government-funded television networks. So as a part of that, people have their very clear views about the, the free-to-air commercial channels and what they are and aren't doing and how well they are and aren't going. And one of them at the moment is really struggling like it is it can't seem to get a win on anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Steve, you've been using the Foxtel Go app on your iPad as a, as a review. How do you like it so far? Changed my life. Really? I love it. It is some of the smartest technology that I've seen when it comes to television because it's not just your traditional second screen app where it's, oh, jump in here and talk to people who are watching shows. Mm. In fact, it's the, the complete antithesis. It is, it's, it's a multi multifunctional app in that yeah. not only can you pull it up and go, hey, what are the, I've got these channels in my package, and they'll say, well, here you go. You can watch them live wherever you are. You can just watch them now. Uh, and I, here's our catch-up service. So we've got uh, in the, the, the channels that you subscribe to, we've got maybe 10 episodes of this and three episodes of that uh, and a whole season of this that we're currently screening. So you can jump on and watch all or any of that as you like. The yes. only thing it's missing now, I think, and hopefully this will come in the future, is, uh, of course, Foxtel in Australia are famous for their IQ, their set-top box, which allows people to record Foxtel programs and, and watch them back. There is no recording functionality or, or earmarking, so well, I'm missing this episode. I want to watch it later. You're sort of at the mercy of what they've got on their catch-up. Yep. But I think that will come. I think it'll get to the point where, you know, hey, I know I'm going to miss that episode of Gossip Girl, for example, uh, and I can't watch it at the time it's on, but I want to watch it later. So can I just mark it and then, you know, 20 minutes or an hour after I've watched it, I want to watch that episode now. All right. We're just going to um, add Andrew in real quick because uh, he has to go for a minute. So we're just going to quickly call him if he answers. Um, hey, Andrew, welcome, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, Brad. How are you? I'm good, buddy. Where are you at the moment? Tell us where you are. Um, just, uh, just basically outside the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit. We're just about to head in. There's quite a number of people out here, and um, yeah, just about to head into the Melbourne Formula One Grand Prix. All right. Any questions for Andrew, guys? Steve, any questions? 
Um, I don't know. Who, who do you think is going <laughs> to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win, Andrew? I think I think it's going to be a Red Bull or Ferrari, which is probably not really taking a huge step, you know, into the dark here. But uh, I, th I think Mark Webber, the the Australian, will actually get a podium this time around. He's never had a podium in his home Grand Prix, and I think uh, Felipe Massa, who gets a a, a lot of um, bad karma from Ferrari fans. I think he's going to actually do really well at uh, this Grand Prix too. So, you know, look for a Red Bull or a Ferrari. Vettel could win. That's, you know, the obvious. Mm -hmm. But I think Massa and Weber will do really well and maybe even beat Alonso and Vettel, who are the two number ones for their respective teams. Definitely. And the big race is tomorrow. Is that correct, Andrew? Yeah, that's right. The big race is tomorrow. We're just going to head out now to, um, to qualifying. And look, it's really interesting when you look around the circuit. A couple of years ago, nobody sort of had devices and things. Now, when you sit in the stands here, Everybody has their live timing devices. They're keeping an eye on the sector times and lap times and see, see who's doing what. So it's, you know, it's a really interesting change from just sort of watching cars go zooming around the corner to actually having a, a more analytical, analytical approach to you know, the sport as a whole. So as far as technology and what it's doing for Formula One, it's, it's constantly expanding, I think, the market and knowledge that people have about it. Definitely. Brian, any questions for Andrew? Uh, will Danica Patrick be there? <laughs> I, I'm not too sure, Brian. Um, I would have thought you could tell me if you've been up having a look on the, the Googles all night, seeing the movements. <laughs> um, uh, I did, isn't this um, the... Uh, is, isn't this like the what um, was supposed to come to uh, Melbourne like recently? Like... Uh, uh, like NASCAR, in a way. Yeah, no, that it's, it's it's not the Indy cars. This is the yeah. Formula One. So it's a different yeah, this is Formula One. one yeah. I remember you posting a thing like I don't know last month saying you know that uh, there might be some. I don't know if it's Formula One, but it was like another race that would have come to Melbourne. Um, there might, yeah, there's plenty of races coming on. But anyway, yeah, Steve, there's actually two U.S. Grand Prix this year as well, so that's that's going to be interesting to see how they're adopted. Uh, Steve, Mark, do you have any questions for Andrew before he goes? Yeah, oh. just a quick one, Andrew. Uh, sure. Are you seeing lots of people with smartphones and those kinds of things? Is there an official app, or are there team apps that people can follow along with while they're at the at the circuit and see what's going on? Yeah, look, there is an official app, um, and it's made by a company called Soft Power, Soft Power, and uh, it, look, it costs thirty-five dollars for the actual Holy crap. app. Yeah, thirty-five dollars <laughs> oh. to buy the official app. It does the whole year round. Wow. Um, but it gives you GPS. It gives you live timing, so you can actually follow the cars around the circuit via GPS. So it's quite an advanced uh, app, and people buy it. You know, a lot of people have. The official app on their phone, their iPad, their Samsung, and so forth. So it's um, it's more, probably one of the more expensive apps that you're ever going to see, but it's it's moving off the shelves. Unbelievable! So That's you, almost like so souvenir so app. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Wow. So you're actually outside the racetrack at the moment, are you? Yeah, that's right. We're just about to head in now. There's, uh, as I said, everywhere you look, there's people in Ferrari and Red Bull and so forth, and in, in Australia particularly because we have an Aussie driver in both the the primary Red Bull team and also their secondary Toro Rosso. Just about everyone around that you look and see is is wearing a Red Bull logo. All right, Joe. Any questions before he goes? No, just um, is Beverly with you? <laughs> no, I've got my my good wife Christy with me, so um, she's actually trying on Formula One for the first time today, and she's not overly happy about it. I've had to convince her, honey, come out, have a look, see what you think. I think it's going to be a, a one-time play, though, so we'll <laughs> see how it goes. So that's today and tomorrow. So we'll have to um. <laughs> I'll give you the feedback next week and right, mate. see what you think of it. All right. Good stuff. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate your time, mate. See you next week. Not a problem at all. Enjoy, guys. I'll, te I'll see you guys next week. Yep, definitely. Thanks. See you next weekend. Thank Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> thanks, Jody. Thank <laughs> oh, you. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Birthday, by the way. So, yeah. yeah. No worries. Thanks, guys. I'll thanks. catch you guys later on. Have fun. No. Have fun. You have fun. <laughs> 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 no, don't get run over by the car. <laughs> That's awful. Um, now is this? Uh, isn't this uh, like? Is this anything like? Um, you know, r r like the race car, NASCAR, or, yeah, or IndyCar, or is it? Um, it's the uh, F kind of like where they swerve, you know, in it, in and out, and you know all these curves and stuff like they do in well, Europe. No, if you know if you don't know what it is, uh, Brian, just Google it on F1 Grand Prix, and you'll see what it, what it is. 
It's just, yeah. Uh, okay, so it's it's just loop track yeah. and stuff like that's yeah, D five. Oh, okay. It's in Melbourne, the, yeah, in Melbourne. Um. So yeah, Steve. What else? But what else have you been up to, mate? Any other news? Steve Monk. Oh, look, there's tons going on. I mean, we're hitting the end of ratings for the, the first part of the season. Uh, so television-wise, there's thousands of things happening. Uh, it, it's it's kind of crazy, you know. And then, uh, of course, you layer in the fact that my day job is kind of up and down, and delivering technology in a, in a mining application. It's kind of... Uh, uh, there's not a lot of time to sleep in all of that. Unbelievable. Um, what do you think about the new Z-Box that came out about a year ago? Or something, was it a year ago? Yeah, Z-Box, if, if you don't know, it's a second screen app, so it's designed for engagement and, and uh, viewer audience opportunities so that they can be watching along with, uh, I don't know, the latest American Idol app or, or whatever, uh, and everyone jumps on and they use that instead of, say, Twitter or Facebook. It's to try and draw that conversation together. I'm just cynical about second screen apps. Mm. I mean, Z-Box for mine is the best implementation of a second screen app that I've seen. But it's still. Why am I not talking about it on Twitter? Why am I not going there predominantly? Yeah, exactly. Um, ABC put out one uh, not long ago too. Steve, did you see that one? Yeah, the ABC have just released their companion app, and, and imaginatively it. titled the ABC Companion App. Uh, it, and it's the same kind of thing. I mean, it's about quizzes. It's about you know asking questions and conversation. And I think anyone that try, uh, tries to own the conversation about a specific TV show is just kind of barking up the wrong tree. I mean, yeah. sure, give me added value. Allow me to interact and do that sort of stuff. But why not just let me do it in my chosen social network rather than your specific app? Exactly. Yep, good answer. Um, do you want to hang around for a minute, Steve, or do you, do you need to go? Oh, look, I'm happy to hang around as long as everything works. It works fine, mate. Um, Billy's got some news he wants to mention. Go ahead, Billy. Jump in the news, mate. Sure. Well, as we've been talking about in a real game changer, Foxtel offers subscriptions on the go starting in June. You'll be able to subscribe to a range of Foxtel channels for viewing on smartphones, tablets, and computers without the need for a traditional home installation. And speaking of content subscriptions, Amazon Prime is said to be a huge success with more than 10 million members. And if you need a new system to enjoy all that content, at South by Southwest, Dell showed off a new SPX 18-inch all-in-one tablet coming in under 5 pounds so you can take all that content with you. Samsung announced their new Galaxy S4 to mix reactions. Fortune said, meh. Slate says, packed with inane features that you'll never use. CNET said, the display's looking good. And Wired said, mighty yet flawed. Google seems to be ruffling some feathers with the announcement of the death of Google Reader as a petition of over 100,000 signatures has arrived to try and save the service from shutting down on July 1st. And to all the geeks out there like me that are sporting glasses, Google has confirmed that Google Glass will support prescription lenses later this year. Google Now, the voice-enabled personal assistant available on Android, may be making its way to the desktop. A new reference in the features was discovered in the latest Chromium release. And Google may not be stopping there. A video was posted and then pulled from YouTube that showed Google Now as part of the Google iOS app. There's no word on when or if this feature is coming. Meanwhile, Google has released its YouTube Capture Video Recording app for the iPad to provide you with an all-in-one solution to get your movies to their video sharing service. And more good news for Google, hackers failed to crack Chrome OS and Android tablets are projected to outsell the iPad for the first time in 2013. And in Apple news, well, I've got nothing. No product announcement, not even really interesting, anything interesting in the rumor front. In fact, the best article I could come up with this past week was Phil Schiller's comment that our products are innovative and customers are buying them. And those are your tech headlines. Well, it's unbelievable. There's no Apple news, Billy. I know, it's crazy. I was like searching and that was the only thing I could find out. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> what's your view on them stories, Steve? Well, look, in Apple News, we're still good and you should keep buying us. I think that's <laughs> right. pretty much the subject, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Definitely for sure. Um, what about you, Jody? Uh You know, I, I have to tend to disagree because um, I know I've been hearing rumors about either a 5S or a possible iPhone 6. Um. And I know I'm not the only one that's heard those rumors. <laughs> well, I, but those th they were just like little things. I didn't nothing major, like you know something that was proof. Just nothing interesting. Just that there's one working. Well, of course there's one working. I mean, <laughs> they're working on one. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, and and some of the rumors that I heard about the new um, Apple, um, whether it's going to be a 5s or a six, it's probably going to be a 5s. I would I would suspect. 
but um, the impression that I got is that the screen is going to go flush to the edges, which is going to be one of the, the big innovations if they make innovations. But, uh, you know, I mean, there are there seem to be a lot of people who are jumping ship these days. So, I, Billy, I'm not saying that you're off target. It's just, oh, you know, no, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's as bleak. <laughs> right. Did, <laughs> uh, did, you s- <laughs> did you see the Samsung announcement? It, well, the Samsung thing was huge, and, and apparently... Um, there's a lot of people jumping ship to to that also. Well, the presentation was the the present. I watched the presentation the other day, and it was horrible, 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 horrible. Um, but I, I, that is, I'm not a marketing guy. I guess what made it, horrible? <laughs> it was just really bad acting and really just too much over the top mm. cheesiness. Yeah. Um, you know, just show me the product. Show me. Tell me what it can do. Don't go put up these fake scenarios with all these fake people and show me what it could do if I really cared about doing that. You know. And we thought Microsoft were bad, huh? Exactly. Well, you know, at least they're showing the product working, which Microsoft just shows people dancing with their product. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. What about you, Chatterbox Live? What do you think about? Them new stories. Um, of course, talking about the Samsung S4. Of course, me and Brad we watched together in the Google Plus Hangout, and we thought it was more of a incremental upgrade, hardware and software wise. Well, I believe y- you did, Brad. What didn't you? Like it was just an incremental upgrade. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, better camera and stuff, bigger screen. Um, uh, you know, it's it's not a bad phone. You know, yeah, I'll, it's still good. Yeah, it's still a good phone, but I'm gonna wait for the new iPhone. I think, but um, so do you think we all have this wrong? too high expectation from any phone manufacturer that they've got to come up with something that's just killer for us to be impressed totally. at this point. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look, we're caught in this cycle now where, you know, a lot of us are locked into maybe one year, two year contracts, whatever, and, and get paying for our phones. And so when it comes time for new phone, we expect new phone to be new phone. So you get into that wrong cycle and all of a sudden it can be, oh, well, I've got one with a marginally better processor and a slightly better camera. Like, big deal. They want time travel. That's what they want. Oh, I want us to make a cup of coffee in the morning, damn it. <laughs> um, what about you, Brian? You haven't said much about this sort of stuff. You can jump in anytime you want. Go ahead. Uh, well, for me, being a Galaxy S2 owner, um, it looks really exciting, though um, they did make the... Uh, point that not once did they ever mention android or google in their speech and of course everyone's suspecting that you know samsung since you know because of the success of the note note 2 and galaxy uh or the galaxy series um that they're going to they're going to come out with their own break away from android altogether and do their own stuff which you know does sound kind of cool, but you know, are we? Do we really want to have a third, or in this case, fourth uh, mobile operating system? Are you talking about are, like are they going to Amazon it? System? Where it's still going to be based off of Android? Uh, well, let's see. They're supposed to come out. The rumor is that, um, like, they're supposed to come out with their own operating system, uh, like. I don't know, in fourth quarter or something. But, uh, you know, that they that they basically want to create an operating system that they can control themselves because they want to be like Apple as well. So We're lazy consumers, right? We like it when it's all cut and dry and works for us, particularly a phone environment. I mean, it's a little bit different to a laptop or a PC uh, situation where we've got some flexibility and we can even change components inside the box. This is, here's your phone, it's going to work, and we expect it to work and work well. I find it tough enough when I have to jump between my Galaxy S3, which is my work phone, and my iPhone 5, uh, which is my uh, personal phone. Uh, just jumping between those two environments, which are both relatively proprietary and do their own things, but do a lot of the things similar, it kind of hurts my brain, left to right brain stuff. It's like jumping between um, OS X and Windows 8. It's like, oh, hang on. It, uh, we do this differently here, but I want to do the same thing with it. Yeah. Hmm. But, um, you know, I as much as I'd like to look forward to getting the Galaxy S4, I think I'll wait to see what happens with the uh, 
Galaxy Note three whenever that comes out. Mm. Yeah, because I because from my from my standpoint, you know, I think the stylus is you know, as you can see, you know, the Note two has been a big hit with the you know with the stylus and stuff, and you know, for a tech guy like me, I prefer to send documents like if I have a contract and I need to sign a document I hate having to print out stuff and then fax it over and I still left and left with the paper that's you know I would never use again whereas you know I can get on my note use the stylus sign it and send it out and nothing is wasted yeah good good answer Brian so Brian let's uh jump on to you for a second talk about you what you do oh no you do a uh podcast and you have a website called modern day computers yeah, well, it's actually the other way around. I have a blog called Modern Day Computers. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get into the podcasting thing. Still trying to figure out you know where I want to go and stuff. But mm-hmm. you know, with me trying to find work, it does get you know kind of uh, hectic and stuff. But um, basically, I want to get out the you know the. Modern day computers. I mean, that's technology of the modern day. But you know, so I talk about you know, in this case, the Galaxy S4 and new Apple stuff. You, know, I am uh, platform neutral when it comes to between Apple and uh, Android or PC and Mac. You know, uh-huh. I'd rather give the news about you know what it, the good, bad, and the ugly, and let you determine whether it's a good product for you to get. All right. Jody, you got questions for Brian? Um, yeah, Brian, do you have, I know you said you're platform neutral, but do you have a personal preference? Do you prefer PC to Mac or uh, Linux? What, what's your operating system of choice? Uh, well, I use, a, what I use, what the computer I am on now talking to you is, is a PC. It's a seven-year-old PC that I built myself and it's still going strong. I have a Mac Mini and a MacBook Pro. I have, but you know, if if I make a choice, you, know, it's my PC because it does everything I needed to do. My Macs, you know, they're nice, but you know, they do, they don't have as much of the raw power that I want it to do until I can afford to getting like a Mac Pro or something or you know if if they come out with a Mac mini that you know totally blows away you know my Mac or my PC I love the iPad mini I think it's a great device um Jody you'd have an iPad mini but you have do you have an iPad 3 Yeah I've got a 3 I I haven't gotten the 4 but when the 5 comes out I'll probably leap to that one <laughs> Yeah you're an Apple fan girl <laughs> You bet I thought so um what are you going to go to the 5 or are you going to go to the next mini you know, I don't get the mini. I I know Brad really likes them, and I know a lot of people really like I it. Love I've got, the mini. <laughs> but, but I've got the iPhone. I've got the iPad. I've got um, uh, the MacBook Retinal Retina display. You know, it's like I just I've got an Apple TV. I don't I don't see where the mini's going to add anything. I think you should. I've it. looked at the mini, and it's basically you know to me, it's. It's the same size as a Nexus 7, which I have as well. And it's like, okay, I'm just going down, what, three inches? And, you know, I don't have much of a problem with my ancient iPad. That is the iPad 3 already. Yep. Um, Steve, what's your view on all this? You have, you have an iPad or an iPad mini? Or? Oh, yeah, I got the... Well, I, I got the... Oh, wrong Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Steve, Steve yep. I'll, go ahead. I got the original. <laughs> I got the original iPad when it came out, and I've still got that, and that's still kicking along. My wife and I gave each other iPad Minis for Christmas last year. Nice. And look, I, I travel a bunch. I spend an awful lot of time in planes, uh, and both of them, both the iPad original and the Mini, work really well. But I just find that the Mini is the best games machine I've ever <sighs> held in my hand. Oh yeah, definitely. I agree with that for sure. Right. Like, I mean, particularly for things like, I'm a big fan of uh, racing games, and Real Racing 3 currently has me completely flummoxed as to how to be any good at it, but I'm loving it to bits. Uh, and it just, it fits, and I've played it on both, uh, a, like, a new iPad 
and the Mini, and the Mini just seems the right size for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can you notice any, any quality difference between them two? With Not negligible. Like, it just rocks. Both of them work well. Mm. You know, there's no pixelization or anything like that. It's just excellent. That's good. That's good. Uh, Chatterbox Live, what about you? Um, <clears throat> I do have the uh, iPad 2 and... Uh, and, uh, of course, with the Mini, I think the biggest difference is really the size and the price. Uh, lower the, pli- the price uh, a little bit down. That way, people can get into the, uh, you know, the iPad a little bit easier price point. All right. Cool, cool. Um, what else, Billy? What else do you want to mention? What is that uh, actually, I, I have a question to pose, pose out there. Everyone keeps talking about apps for the Apple TV, which I think is going to be awesome, and I can't wait. Um, but I think that there's a problem that uh, Apple's going to have in that if they open up the Apple TV to apps, they're going to have things like um, Flickster, mm-hmm. Amazon, mm-hmm. Uh, and all these other com- video competing services that they don't currently have to fight with in the Apple TV space. Oh, yeah, for sure. That would be fantastic to have the apps on there, on the Apple TV. That would be so cool. That would be way cool. Um, what are you, what's your view on that, Brian? Uh, with the Apple TV, I look for... I, for me, I every de, every mobile device that I have, I have uh, jailbroken for the iOS side and rooted on the other side. So I'm kind of a, you know, a low level hacker, even though I don't hack myself. Mm-hmm. But you know, reading about what some of the stuff that you know uh, that the Apple TV can do, but Apple won't let it do. Um, I look forward to a jailbreak where I can actually unlock that power because um, I always like getting my money's worth, even if Apple doesn't like it. Definitely. Um, Steve, are you still there, mate? Which Steve? Uh, the one that's talking right now. Yes, I'm still here then. All right, good stuff. Um, do you want to mention before anything before we go, your Twitter address, website, and anything cool? Anything else, anything else you want to mention what you've been up to? Oh, look, there's lots of stuff. Guys, if you want to get involved and know anything of what's going on in the Australian TV landscape, go to MolksTVTalk.com. Follow me on Twitter, MolksTVTalk. Uh, I do talk a lot about television, but more than happy to hear about what people think about it, what they like to watch, what they don't like to watch. Uh, Beyond that, I'm on another podcast called The Thing Committee, where we basically determine as a public service what are and aren't things. So that's worth checking out. All of them are on iTunes, but go to ThingCommittee.com as well. Uh, And I just love everything. What's your favorite TV show at the moment? Oh, right now on air? Yep. That's tough, man. That's like asking me which of my kids is, is my favorite. Oh. Uh, actually, no, that's really easy. Um, my favorite <laughs> TV show <laughs> uh, in Australia would be My Kitchen Rules. I'm just absorbed into that show. The casting is amazing, and there's just an amazing level of bitchiness, which makes it really engaging to watch. I've been getting into uh, Pack to the Rafters. Yeah, Pack to the Rafters is doing all right. House Husband Season 2 is going to be incredible when that drops on us after Easter. Okay. Um, so there's lots of great drama going around. And, and look, the winner absolutely in all of this is the fans and the viewers because there's just networks falling over themselves to make good content at oh, the yeah, moment. definitely. What about uh, Sons of Anarchy? Have you had any word on about that coming on free day at all? Uh, not for ages because the latest series of Sons of Anarchy is, is still popping out up on Foxtel. Mm. Um one are limited in the in the agreement that they can roll out on free to air, so we're kind of caught somewhat. I love Sons of Anarchy; it's the best show ever. Oh, it's excellent. I love it. Um, all right, thanks so much for being on, Steve. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. Yep. And um, Chatterbox thank Live. You. Thank you very much. You on Twitter. Oh, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Chatterbox underscore Live. All right, Brian. What do you want, what do you want to say before we go? Uh, have fun and geek out. And what's your Twitter name and stuff? Uh, my Twitter, Facebook, and uh, of Twitter and Facebook is you know, twitter.com slash Brian Boer, B R I A N B O O H E R, facebook.com slash Brian Boer. You know, subscribe to me. I'd like to have some subscribers uh, there. And my Google Plus, which you will find me uh, posting from my, mainly, is. Uh, um, G plus dot T O slash Brian Burr, and you can follow my website. Uh, I'm going to try to start keeping it up to date at moderndaycomputers.com. So, if I put a link to that in the show notes, everything will be there, mate. Yeah. All right. Put one link, and it should be all there to go check out Brian's stuff. Uh, Jody. 
You can find me on Twitter as Sunswept. You can find me on Google Plus as Jody Rains. You can find me at my website, which is webmarcom.net, or uh, my other podcast, which is A2SM, which stands for Addicted to Social Media. Uh, you can get me so. on Twitter at Brad Oz on a tech webcast, Jacob's podcast, Tech Luster. He's um, shout out to Jacob Jones. Want to, do you want to say anything about Jacob Jones, Brian? Um, the stuff I would have to say would probably be censored later on. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's that bad, is it? Well, um, Billy, where can they get you at, mate? Uh, that iPadGuy.com and all the social networks. That, Are you still doing podcast, that iPad Guy podcast? I'm probably going to be doing one if I go pick up this Microsoft uh, Surface so I can cover it. Oh, yeah. When does that close? That closed now. Ugh. Do you have, still have time to go and get it all? I'm going to go sneak over one. I found a store open until 9. Oh, really? What time is it now? 8 o'clock. Oh, well, all right. Well, let's wrap it up. I'm going to get one made and uh, have a get a review out there and stuff. I can't wait. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, thanks, Shady, for being on. Thanks, Brian, Steve, uh, Chatterbox Live, Steve as well. <laughs> Two Steves being yeah. on. And um, yeah, Jay, you want to mention him before we go? Um, somebody lost the game. Yes, they <laughs> did. Oh, didn't say my name. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, Chatterbox Live. Yeah, Chatterbox Live, you lost the game. And Jacob Jones, so do you. <laughs> Hi, Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads. Join Will, Eric, and myself as we bring you the latest, most up to date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7 30 p.m. or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However, you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information www.aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest running tech news podcast. Well, that's it for Tech Webcast this week. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed having your mind expanded. Tune in next week for more Tech Talk with Brad, Jason, and whatever crazy guests they've managed to rope in. Don't forget to get the Tech Webcast app from iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast. And of course, check us out on Facebook too. Until next time, may the tech be with you. Peace.